Thanks for joining us today on the Big Blue Podcast. I'm Greg Stone, Metro Campus Provost, here as always with President Lee Goodson. Dr. Goodson, how are you? I'm doing great. How are you? I'm doing really well. And we are here talking today with Kelly David, Director of Academic Advising, uh, Student Retention and Support Services. Uh, Kelly's here at the Metro Campus. And uh, there's been a lot of updates and a lot of great things going on in academic advisement since the last time someone from advising was here to talk to us. So thanks for coming in today. and giving everybody an update. Well, thank you for having me. Um, so recently, uh, I think probably most people know that we've hired just a couple of new advisors in the last just a few. few months. Yeah. What about two dozen mm -hmm. new advisors and three new directors, um, <clears throat> one for each of the other campuses. And so um, maybe Kelly, just first start, start us off with what impact that's had already. I mean, I know it's still early, um, but we're already seeing some really positive benefits from that influx of new advisors coming in, right? We sure are. You know, we, um, we've always met with a lot of students. A lot of students have come to advising, but we've actually seen our student contacts increase by 87% since Whoa. last year. And that includes office visits, phone calls, emails, all the outreach we're doing. So just having all those advisors on campus, we can reach so many more students so many That's more times. That's amazing. That's amazing. I'm sorry about my effusive response. That, <laughs> that is a big number. That is, is a big number. And so you expect that to go up again oh, next yeah. year because all the new advisors have been mm -hmm. hired now. So that was just with the reallocation. Right. right. That was just, and they were just hired in June and just started really seeing students in August. So, you know, since then, we've just seen so many more contacts. The amount of time we actually get to spend with students has increased, and our wait time to see an advisor has decreased, which makes students happier when they go in to not have to wait for in long lines to see their advisor. And then when they're in there, we can spend more, times going, more time going over what's important. That's, that's yeah. great news. Yeah. You know, we went to... Um, during the Bill and Melinda Gates American Association of Community Colleges Pathways Project, mm -hmm. funded by the Gates Foundation, we went to those six institutes. And um, in that process, uh, Terry Alonzo went to, mm -hmm. to one of those with us, and faculty always went to one. And someone was up on the stage giving a presentation, and they were on a panel or something. And what was the most important thing to the success of the Pathways Project? And they said three things, mm -hmm. professional development, professional development, professional development. I mean, it was all about making sure the learning is happening on the employee end as well as the student end. And, and all of those new advisors, as well as some of our established advisors, uh, underwent extensive training during the summer, right? Sure. And so tell us what that training was like and how is there a training going to continue? What's mm -hmm. that embedded program look like for all of our advisors? Yes, yeah, so we did. We had, for the first time ever, at least as far as I know at TCC, we were able to train advisors as a group. And so in a classroom setting for six weeks. So in the mornings, they were in a classroom at the conference center sitting through presentations from other departments, getting to know what other departments at TCC do you know, what they do, what they can help advisors with. Like the academic departments? All or kinds. All so kinds of departments. We um, had, like, Matt Munger came and talked to them about academic affairs and how okay. he helps with the catalog and important things advisors need to know. We had Heather Hancock come. We just had a bunch of people come to uh -huh. see our advisors, meet them, get to know them, tell them what they want them to know about their department, about what they do for the students. Um, we also had, in the afternoons, the new advisors would go to campuses. So they would go to the campus they were assigned to, and they would also go to other campuses. So we made sure they visited all four. They got to know everybody, enrollment services staff at all four campuses, other advisors at all four campuses. We really wanted them to keep it consistent. And had they been assigned to their campus mm -hmm. already? Right, so okay. when they were hired, they were assigned to their campus. Okay, so that happened at the beginning. It did. So okay. they came in knowing where they were going. Okay. And then once they got here, we also made sure that they knew all the campuses because, you know, we're one college. We want them to have the same advising experience at Metro that they would have at Northeast. So we want to make sure that our services are consistent. So having them get to know the other campuses was really important for us. Um, 
and we're a big group, so we want them to know the other, our advisors are assigned to different schools. So if you're a health science advisor at Metro, we want you to know the other health science advisors at other campuses so you can work together. So all the students at every campus can get the same information about dental hygiene that they do here at Metro. <clears throat> Kelly, a minute ago you sort of talked about being able for advisors to spend more time with students. Mm -hmm. And that's really part of our ongoing retention efforts as well, right? So, right. I mean, I think all of us had that experience in college where we'd go in and our advisor would help us build a schedule, but you mm -hmm. all are doing really more than that, right? I mean, what's, what other supports are advisors offering to, to students other than just helping them to build their next semester schedule? Right, and I had that same experience. I went to a big school and my advisor was really, hey, you need to make sure you take these classes next semester, see you then, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, we are really focused on educational planning, working with students, talking to them about what their career goals are. Are you wanting to go on to a four-year university and get a bachelor's degree? Are you wanting to enter the workforce? What are your goals? So we work with them on determining goals, and then we make sure our goal is for every student who leaves our office when they first come in to have some sort of educational plan. So using the maps that the faculty have been working really hard on, to make sure that the students know, hey, in the spring I'm gonna take this, and then in the summer I wanna take a class, this would be a good summer class, what's going to happen in the fall, so they, they know when they're supposed to graduate, they know what they need to do each semester to reach that, when should they apply to different programs that they're looking for some of our AAS programs in health sciences. We want them to know that, so each, um, student when they come in we're really talking to them not only about next semester but the semesters after that and this is when you file for graduation which is really important mm -hmm. so. well i'm lee goodson and i'm here with my co-host dr greg stone and you're listening to the big blue podcast our guest today is kelly david and we've been talking about tulsa community college's efforts to increase student retention and support services. And just this morning, I had the opportunity to visit your uh, big meeting of all the advisors. And I said, uh, you know, stand up if you're if you were just hired. And about half the room st stood up, and so it was pretty, pretty exciting. But talk to us. Um, they were talking when I walked in. It wasn't my turn to uh, visit with them yet, so I got to listen to them kind of talk to each other for a little bit. And they were someone was talking about something that happened in an advising session and they you know they were doing little case studies it mm -hmm. seemed like um, so that was pretty interesting to listen to talk to us what about what an advising session looks like and what a student experiences when she meets with an advisor sure you know every session is different because student needs are very different but we guide all of our sessions by an advising checklist so we have a checklist that we've created for each semester for a student that guides you through, you know, brand new students. What are the important points we need to go over with the student? What should they leave here knowing? Um, and then all the way up to the semester before graduation, okay, you're, you're able to graduate next semester. Here's how you file for graduation. Here's what the graduation ceremony looks like, all the information they need to know. And so we guide all of our sessions by a checklist. Of course, things change, you know, depending sure. on needs. Sure. I mean, it's yeah. it, every individual is individual. They right? are. Yeah. <laughs> Do they, are the students now um, required to come see you every semester? They are. For the most part, almost all students are required to see us every Full -time, semester. Full-time, part-time, mm -hmm. regardless. Right. Okay. Right. We do have, we're increasing that. Um, we all first-time entering students are required to see an advisor every semester. Okay. Um, in the past, we haven't we haven't required that you know student transfer students come in every semester to see an advisor, but we're moving towards that. Okay. So if they come in just to take one class, you haven't required it in the past, but you might just to make sure their course mm -hmm. transfers. And, you know, most of them end up coming to us because if they're a transfer student, they we have to look at are they ready to take that course? Do they have proficiency uh -huh. in reading, writing, right. math? And so okay. we end up seeing the majority, the vast majority of students at TCC. So Kelly, given all the, <clears throat> excuse me, all the changes that have happened in the last few months, I feel like you all still have more things coming down the pike, right? I mean, what are the, it's sort of in, I mean, I guess one of the things I never really fully appreciated until really just the last year or so was how dynamic advisement needs to be. I mean, coming from someone who never worked in advisement, you know, my experiences is very limited to how I was advised as mm -hmm. a student, but 
maybe it's just it's a constant change to keep up with the needs of students. So, uh, you know, what are what are the things coming down the pike? You've been really involved with Starfish. Mm-hmm. I know that's continuing sure. to, to grow, but what else is sort of on the horizon for you all? One of the biggest changes we're making, and it's all from student feedback, is appointment-based advising. So in the past, we've always done walk-in. You have to come in, sign up, and wait to see an advisor. And students have been wanting appointments. So we are now starting that. We just started. It's, it's new, but with our new Starfish Connect system, it's very possible now. So students are able, when they're contacted by their advisor, to say, hey, I can meet with you Monday at 2. Are you there? Yes, we can make an appointment. And so that's been really great. Nice. And, and our new advisors, especially, you know, who weren't here during, you know, when we were walk-in, they've been wanting it, too. When can we start making appointments? Yeah. And so they're really excited about it. And is it. that through an app? Is Starfish an app that students can put on their phone and they can communicate with their advisor that way, or is it just through traditional email? Right now, it's not open for students yet, the Starfish Connect system, but they can sign in on a kiosk. We have kiosks at Southeast Campus. Um, Starting in spring, Mary Glenn has been working on this a lot. Um, We're going to have students who are able to go into Starfish. It'll be from MyTCC, and they can go in and see their advisor's appointment times and sign up without ever having to email or call. They can just sign up. Yes, and so it works with Outlook, so advisors can easily put what office hours they have available and students can you know sign up we also will always offer walk-in services we work at a community college and sometimes yeah. people just need to pop in and see somebody but it may not be your advisor right that second it may not be your advisor you probably only have one advisor mm-hmm. on deck all the time for walk-ins right, right? right. so we'll like... have a couple of advisors for walk-ins enough to you know at certain points in the semester, we'll need more for walk-ins than other points, but mm-hmm. yes. But they can also make an appointment if they come in and say, well, I really want to see my advisor, and they're not available right then. We can make an appointment with them at the front desk. I mean, we're we're hoping that most students start making appointments, that we start seeing that, that relationship building that we're already seeing. Like, I want to see my advisor, and I know when I can make an appointment and how to contact them. Now, when they come in for a walk-in, I just have this... Um, logistical question. Mm-hmm. When they come in for a walk-in, are they just put on a list and they literally have to sit sit there the whole time or do we call them back on their phone? Or We do not call them back on their phone. So okay. right now they are on a list and okay. so they stay in the waiting room. Now at some campuses you have other services close by so they could go visit like uh-huh. for instance at Metro they can go walk over to enrollment services or financial aid if they need uh-huh. to. The good news is, since we've hired 22 advisors, students aren't waiting very long. They're getting called in pretty quick. They are, and so it doesn't take as long. We're really focused on keeping wait times as low as we can for students because it doesn't help anybody to have high wait times for advisors. We don't want them to leave. Well, um, we have arrived at the point in the interview, Kelly, where we're going to ask the big question. Okay. Okay. And that is, if you could go back in time and give your 18-year-old self a piece of advice before you started college, what would it be? Well, there's a lot I would like to tell my 18-year-old self. But, you know, working at TCC, I've really, I've realized that I did not take advantage of resources that my college offered. I didn't go and see career services. Why didn't didn't I do that? No, I never went to the writing lab. And I made so many C pluses Mm -hmm. on my papers. What was the point? I had chemistry tutors like on the lower level of my dorm. I never visited them, and I struggled through chemistry. So we just we don't have enough. I I know it's like having the confidence to Mm -hmm. go and take advantage of things, or even to know that they're there. I know. There's a lot. You know, I'm like you. I. I don't think I ever went to career services. I kind of knew it was there, but I thought, oh, I know what I want to do. Right. Right. Although it's obviously much more than that. But there are lots of things that I didn't even know were there that I could have taken advantage of. Well, and I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I would have loved to have explored other majors, and I probably would have still picked the same one. But just to, you know... Exactly. Different classes that maybe are kind of outside of my comfort zone. That would have been great. So I would have changed my major. I never changed my major. I never did either. I never struggled through okay. choosing a major. <clears throat> I, I I changed enough for both of you, so that's fine. <laughs> you good to know. Okay. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I have I have one change for each of you, so it's yeah, good. Yeah, but that's good <laughs> advice. Really yeah. watch for those resources and mm-hmm. take advantage of them. You've earned them or paid for them or your right. parents have or your Pell Grant is exactly. or whatever. Right. And, and they're here for the students. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. And join an organization. 
That's good advice. That's always yeah. good, too. Yeah. You've been listening to the Big Blue Podcast. We want to thank our guest, Kelly David, um, who's one of our fantastic directors of academic advising, for spending some time with us today. And thank you all for listening. Remember, you can catch the Big Blue Podcast every week in the week at TCC and on the Creativity Channel at YouTube. Kelly, thanks so much for taking some time to come over and talk with us. Dr. Goodson, thank you. Thank and you. And we will see you next time.